Hey, it's Sharon Sheldon here from Content Sparks. And have you ever had trouble with that pesky table of contents that come in the beginning of different documents? Every time you make a change to a document, they need to be updated. So I'm going to show you how you can do that really quickly using one of our course books from Content Sparks. In this case, I'm using a book from a course, a big course we have called Shoestring Budget Startup. But first, let me show you how they actually work. I'm going to the table of contents in this document, and I just highlighted it. And if I click or control click on any of the numbers, so I'm going to press control click, it takes me to that page. And if you look at this page, when I highlight the title, which is what shows up in the table of contents, and I go up to the top where there, there's a section called styles, I'm going to click on the down arrow so you can see all of them. And you can see that this particular one has heading one highlighted. That's the style of that text. And that's what tells Word to put it in your table of contents. So let's go back up there to the table. And I'll show you what happens when you need to update it. Because anytime you add text to a page or a page or delete text on a page, anything that changes the numbers, then you're going to need to update this table. So let's go and delete something that changes it. So I'm going to go to the very first chapter and find something here. I'll delete the very end here with the learning activity. And that's now brought that bottom, the page after, up so that page numbers do change. So then I'm going to go back up to the table, highlight the table, right click, click on Update Field, and I get the choice of either updating page numbers only or updating the entire table. So if you, in this case, we have changed just the page numbers, so we could just do that. If I do Update Entire Table, it's going to regenerate the table. So let's just do the page numbers because we want all those other things to stay the same. So I click OK and now you can see that it changed from it was six before it's now five on there so then if you do change anything else like one of these titles or say you add a section or delete a section the whole table needs to change so let me show you that I'm gonna undo what I just did you can see it goes back to six so then let's go back to this section that says good business strategy and planning to keep your costs low. That's a pretty long title. So let's edit that and I'll change it to how about keep costs low with, with good business planning. Okay, so that changed the title, but let's do one more change and add a section as well. I'm going to add a section just before the introduction that's about me, an about me little bio section, because you should always has, have something like that. So I'm going to click Control Enter so that I add a blank page, go up to the top of that page, and I'm just going to put in about me. And then obviously I'd add a little text of some sort. I'd want to change that format so that it's not also in the H1. So let's make sure this, the about me, is that heading one it is so that it'll show up and then we don't want this extra text to show up yeah so we'll just make that text uh, something plain a regular paragraph text of some sort normal here main text I think is in this particular one so we've got the extra section we also deleted a section and that all has to show up now in the table of contents so I go back up I'm gonna click on it so that it's all highlighted I'm going to right click again, click on update field, and this time we want to update the entire table so that the new section and the changed title show up. So here it's changed it, it's added back, it's added in the about me, and it's changed that other title to keep your costs low with good business planning. Now you can see that the styles on each of these, the all caps, kind of got messed up because when I actually typed it in I wasn't very consistent. Also it put in the title course book at the beginning because that actually has the heading one on it. So you have a couple choices. You could change that style there but we want it to all be consistent when people look at it. Or you can actually go in and delete these. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to delete 
this extra text and you can do this manually. You can just highlight it and our backspace on there and it disappears. And if I want to manually change any of the fonts and settings on here, I can do that. So I can highlight everything with my mouse. And then I can go up to the top here. I could change the font, the size. I'm going to make sure here that it's all caps. So I'm going to click on the, on the change case little icon there, down arrow, and then click uppercase. So now it's all uppercase. And our table of contents is all up to date. Now remember that you need to do this after all editing of your document. Make sure it's up to date. It's a handy way for people to navigate your document and it'll stay there when you convert it to PDF. So let me show you how that works. I'm going to save it as a PDF, which you always need to do before you share it with someone. So you do File. If you have the professional Adobe PDF, you'll have that in your menu. I'm just going to click on Save As. I'll click the down arrow for save as type, click on PDF, so now it's going to save it as a PDF, click save, it's working in the background to do that, and now let me open that up, and here it is, and if I go down to the table of contents now, you look, you can see a little hand and that is how it actually takes people to the document, so they, if they have it open on their computer, they can click on the number and it'll take them immediately there. Now I've just seen that I have a little mistake there. I forgot to do a uh, page break. So let's go back to the document and I can quickly get to that page by control click. And here let's make sure this starts on a new page because every chapter you want to have start on a new page. So I do control enter and now my page number for that chapter has changed. So if I'm all done, I'll go back up. And in this case, I don't want everything else changing in here, just that page number. So I'll right click again. I'll do update field and just update page numbers only. I did that and you see the only thing that changed now was that keep your costs low. Of course, I'll now have to save that as PDF again. And this is just what happens. Just make sure all your edits are done before you actually save things. So I'm going to overwrite the other one. Open it up again. Go to the table of contents. Now let's try that chapter again. I'm going to hover my hand over that, control click, and now I'm at the correct page, page six. And that's it. Now you can update your table of contents whenever you need to.